This is the Roland JX 3P analog synth from 1983, the sister synth to the Juno 106. Over here, we have the Roland JD800 Linear Arithmetic Synthesizer from 1991, maybe the greatest digital synth of all time. Back over here, we have the Roland Alpha Juno 2 Analog Synth from 1985. Then back over here, we have the original bad boy, the Roland D50 Linear Arithmetic Synthesizer from 1987. All the way over here, we have the Roland JP8000 Virtual Analog Synthesizer from 1997. Let's check this one out. And last but not least, we have the Roland U20 RSPCM keyboard from 1988. And one of these keyboards has to die. So I am Vulture Culture, and for the past five weeks, we have been checking out Roland Classic Synthesizers all the way back from 1983 to 1997. And I have too many of them, and it is time to put a couple of them up on reverb. And so the purpose of tonight is to try to pick which ones are uh, the ones that are going to stay in the collection and which ones have to go. So welcome to the stream. This is Scum Night. We do this every Wednesday at 9. How's everybody doing? What do we think so far just comparing those patches? What I want to do tonight is actually cover a few different uh, sort of dimensions and rate these synthesizers, not just for myself, but which will be fun to decide what I end up saving and what we put up on Reverb. But we are also going to be checking them out because it could be useful to you if you're interested in buying a vintage synthesizer, which ones are worth the money and which ones are not. So we could start anywhere, uh, but let's see here what everybody's saying. Uh, the JD800 needs a cheese emoji. That's uh, awesome. Let's see what else. What else is going on here? JP8000 and not sure. Uh, the U20, in my opinion, interesting. You should have a poll. That's a great idea. Um, I did have a few issues with both the U20 and the JP8000, and we'll get into that soon. So let's talk about the categories for the score. So I'm going to give each one of these synths a score of one to five in four categories. So the first one is going to be the sound. Now, this is the most subjective one because obviously uh, everybody's going to have their different tastes for sounds. Like, for instance, I love the synth I'm leaning up against, the, or I should say Rompler, the Proteus, because it's the sound of the video games Mist and the TV show X-Files that I grew up loving. Uh, but that's not the nostalgia for everybody. So the sound of this 
keyboard might not be for everyone. Same thing with the sound of the Jupiter 8000, for instance, or the JD800, or the old analog synths. It's very subjective, but I'm going to give you my score, and part of that score is going to be the features. So certain synths don't have aftertouch, like this one. It's not in there, whereas if we come over here and play the Alpha Juno, you can hear that I've got quite a bit of aftertouch control. And so for me, that affects the sound of the synthesizer in a big way that is hard to quantify, but we're going to try and do our best with it. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the interface. So the Roland JX3P over here has a very not great interface at first blush, but I happen to have this retroactive PG2K controller. I also have a retroactive MPG 50 controller for the Alpha Juno. And what that allows us to do is open up these synthesizers and we can start, we can start with this sound, but we can modify it here. And get these really cool sounds. Uh, and so we are going to talk about the synths as I have them, which means that uh, in the case of the D50, for instance, there's the PG-1000 controller by Roland. I don't have one. So that's going to be part of the rating of the interface. My big question is, not only is how does the synth sound, but how is it to program? You know, if I want to make my own sounds, which is my favorite thing to do, does the synth actually lend itself to that, or do I find myself being stuck using the presets? So that's a certain type of a way we're going to score these two. Um, let's see what else is everybody saying. Mist was awesome, Donnie. Uh, our, so those retroactives are better than the Go, makes them both modern and vintage at the same time. Uh, the autocorrect's getting at you. Uh, absolutely. So here's another thing that I'm going to talk about with these synthesizers. is the range of these synthesizers. So not all of these synths are equal. So in fact, a lot of these synthesizers can do a bunch of different things. For instance, the U20 has a lot of sampled waveforms in it, so or uh, samples, so we can go and get into different territory than these other synths can do. That's a pretty terrible sound. Oh, that's a funny uh, thing. I just stumbled upon a better brass patch maybe than I used actually in the intro. So I used the Jupiter 8 brass patch here. And so a, a keyboard like the U20 actually can do a lot of things that these other keyboards can't. One would be like this. a decent piano sound. That is not to be found on these old analog synths. And so we're going to factor that in in what I call the range of the synthesizer. So uh, what can a synth do that goes beyond or how versatile could it be? Here's another way to think about this score would be as if you had to buy one vintage synthesizer, would I recommend it? So for instance, I love the JX3P, but it's probably the simplest of the synths that are here, and so the range is not as good as, say, the JD800 that does have a piano sound in it, as well as a bunch of other cool things. Uh, finally, we're going to talk about reliability. By the way, cheers to all you motherfuckers who are dealing with me talk about all this stuff before we get into it. I appreciate you very much. <laughs> Rant's almost over, and we'll get into some of the sounds. Reliability is exactly what it sounds like. How reliable does this synth feel? I have this incredible JX3P that is so minty and it feels built like a tank. It feels like it could survive. On the other hand, 
The synth I am least impressed by is the Roland JP-8000 in this category. It has been nothing but problems, and so we're going to get into that too. Um, let's see here. Uh, couldn't I do something similar with the D50 back there? Yes, so there are um, patches in the D50. Let's see here if I can find one, actually. We, there are, of course, um, let's see here. Ethnic session, hollowed harp. You have these sort of PCM sounding sorts of patches as well on the D50. Um, so let's see, let's see, let's see. The JX3P sounds nice to me, but I'm watching it on an iPad. Trust me, Aquatic, it sounds nice. <laughs> It really is just that gorgeous sounding analog synth from the 80s. So for those of you guys who want to talk about um, the synthesizers, uh, what, you know, the JX3P is a great, great, great option uh, for sure. Um, go with an AP8080 uh, and an editor librarian. Yes, so that would be a definite possibility as those, from what I hear, sound better. So why don't we start with the JX3P because it's the oldest synth in the room. Okay, I forgot who it was. Uh, uh, was it Dubstation said just uh, save the oldest three and go for it? So that might be a possibility. One cool thing about this synthesizer is the uh, filter is the same filter in the Jupiter 8. So you can get these really crazy... giant sounding analog strings um, and that's where this synth excels um, but we could also go check out a couple of things so here's uh, the electric piano sound you can hear all those sounds maybe wait, wait, wait. what am I doing wrong here I don't want to edit I want to uh, select preset A. Let me just shut this off and turn it back on. Let's try that and go over to electric piano here. Oh, I think this uh, initialized here. Let's go ahead and try. There we go. Th there we are. So this beautiful brass sound. More of a dark, um, charismatic sound. One thing to notice too, I uh, threw a bit of Valhalla delay on the synths that don't have built-in effects, just to make it a little bit more fair. Uh, people always accuse me of putting too much effects on, but truthfully, they're turned down about 20 decibels, I think. Oh, that sounds so good with that reverb though. Really great. I love what else? The vibraphone sounds beautiful using the LFO to affect the amplitude modulation. So let's check this real quick. Really great. And then moving over into um, this, what do we have here? I think it was Pulsar was a really beautiful one. Let's see what it sounds like. Just 
just craziness on the filter. Moving over to filter flow. So you can get a grip on what's going on with a synth. Look at that. All of the keeps in the chat. That's amazing. Uh, Got to keep both the GX3P and the Alpha. Best analog bang for the buck on the current market, vintage or modern. So one thing to talk about with the GX3P, I went today, and there's no real good way to do this, guys. So the way I decided to look at prices, so we could talk about the price, because that does relate to the value of these synths, right? Not just the sound, but the price matters, because otherwise we'd all have Moog 1s and Jupiter 8s, right? So... The price on the JX3P is the cheapest one I could find in good condition on Reverb was $925, which is actually pretty good for a synth from 1983, an analog synth, and about half the price of a Juno 106, so you can easily afford a retroactive PG2K programmer uh, and still be saving at least $500 on what you would spend on a Juno 106, which is my recommendation all day long. Um, as far as the sound of the JX3P, I have to say I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. Now, the only reason I'm giving it a 4 out of 5 for me is because of the feature set. It does not have velocity or aftertouch or a couple of other features. I think if we look over here, I don't... I think it has keyboard tracking on the filter. Let me see if I can see it real quick. Yes, I do see it. Uh, so that's a cool feature, um, but it is not as expressive as the Alpha Juno with Aftertouch. Also, another thing worth mentioning is the sound is a little darker. I don't know why exactly, but this synthesizer has a sort of warmth to it uh, that I prefer over the JX-8P, but not everybody does. And in fact, if you like the 80s, the 8P might be a better option for you. Um, trade it for a JX-8P. Yeah, some people uh, like those more. Um, the JX-8P, I believe, has the same filter as the Alpha Juno 2. So I like having kind of the two things here to compare because you, you do get different sounds. The Juno 2 filter is much brighter and brassier, whereas this has a warmth to it um, that is really cool. A very warm, convincing analog sound, D DCO based synth. Really, really great. Um, so it sounds like everybody likes that. As far as the interface goes on this synthesizer, uh, my rating with the PG2K would be a 5. If you did not have a PG2K, I am going to give it a 1 for the interface because. Using the interface is not fun at all. <laughs> not for a modern programmer. And they didn't make it to be fun. They wanted you to buy the extra programmer and use it. So that's a thing to talk about. A lot of people might be upset with this, but I'm going to say that the GX3P's range is not very good. In fact, looking around the room... I want to say that this one has the worst range of any synthesizer here. So that's going to be a score of one for me. Um, I know this sounds super brutal, but I'm trying to be as honest as I can. Because if you're watching this video out there, you're probably thinking to yourself, hmm, maybe I'm going to buy a vintage synth one day. What would be a good vintage synth to got, buy? And maybe you're a big Roland fan, so I have a bunch of Roland synths, and we can talk about them. Um, but the thing is, I want you to spend your money wisely. As someone said recently, their mother told them that you can only spend the money once, so use it wisely. And I think that's a very good thing to keep in mind. Once again, this would all be moot if we could afford Moog 1s, perhaps. But we can't, right? Uh, 
that beer is worrying you. Yes, it, so it's it's pretty stable here. If it bothers you too much, aquatic, I'll move it. Um, yeah, the lack of velocity is disappointing. I will say this, aquatic. I have um, a Poly 6.2. Obviously, you can see that up there. And when it comes to making analog sounds, I often find myself turning the velocity off because there's enough chaos going around already with the oscillators having some drift and randomness to them. And that when I actually go into making a track, I end up having to slam it with so much compression to get it to fit in a track that the better way to do it is actually just to turn the velocity down or off. And I was doing that a lot with like, say, my Korg Prologue. And so they're actually, it's surprising how much that doesn't matter when it comes to, if you're doing like analog strings, analog brass, that type of thing. I like having velocity for leads because leads are a lot of fun to have like some expression in. But when it comes to like bass and uh, strings and brass, I think velocity is a little overrated. Um, Valhalla are never on sale $50 each or are they worth it? Yes. So Valhalla best $50 you could spend on a plugin. You're hearing, uh, the Valhalla delay plugin, which is amazing. Definitely check out super massive, which is free. I'm not aware that they ever do sales though. Um, let's see. I'd rather have synths that do individual things that I love rather than jack of all trains. Range isn't important to me. And I agree with that, Dub, actually. I'm much more interested because I can have, I'm lucky enough to be able to afford 20 vintage synthesizers in this room that I don't feel the need to get something that's a jack of all trades. And a lot of the jack of all trades synths, starting with something like the Korg M1, those synths really bother me because they don't do anything very well. So range isn't necessarily a bad thing to not have. So with reliability, I'm going to give this synth a five as I think it is probably the best built synth in the room, perhaps, uh, or at least of what we're talking about today. So the total score for this synthesizer for me, these are just my subjective scores. This is going to get a 15. Uh, so it seems like everybody is into the uh is into the jx3p i don't think anybody wants me to get rid of this really cool synth great sounds that you can get out of this analog synth. Just incredible. Yes, and it does have that incredible um, uh, analog chorus. So of the room, I believe the only two that have analog chorus are the JX3P and the Alpha Juno. So that's worth talking about. Um, let's see. Are filters and oscillators parameters to, to find? Yes. Um, How's the chorus on uh, the JX3P? I would say it is very good. So let's uh, go ahead and turn it off real quick on this patch and play a couple of things real quick. Uh, something like this, maybe? That is no chorus. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see how that changes things.
Of course, there's going to be endless debates among vintage gear snobs as far as to whether or not it's as good as the 106. But I think in general, if you're looking for that vintage Roland uh, magic from the chorus, it's got it. So that would be my opinion on that. Mm. Drinking alcohol. Very cool. Filters and oscillators, parameters to define. I'm going to just roll that into sound. Um, yes, yes, yes. Uh, the JX3P internally runs at envelopes at 10 milliseconds. 106 does it at 4 milliseconds, and the difference is noticeable to me. Yo, what's up? We got porn bots in the chat. That's awesome. Love, love that. Um, yes, so that is a thing uh, that people say about the JX3P, which is that because the uh, chip on it had a lot to, a lot of numbers to crunch in 1983, um, you can hear that it has some troubles doing that. So let's go ahead and adjust the envelope here. <laughs> And what I'm going to do is we have a sound here and I want to show you how quick it can get because people bring up this envelope thing and I want to just let you guys decide if that's a thing that you're worried about. We'll just do a simple pluck here real quick. And that's actually not the decay all the way down. That's just very fast. All right. For me, if that's not fast enough of a, of a response, I guess I'm too much of an idiot to know the difference. To put this in perspective too, um, the difference between 10 milliseconds and 4 milliseconds is approximately the distance of milliseconds between when a drummer hits the snare and when the sound hits the ears of the drummer. So that's a thing to think about. When we're talking about very small millisecond counts, it's, I think sometimes people overemphasize them. For the JX3P, I do not feel a sense of latency, although maybe if I had a 106 here, back to back to compare, we could do that. Um, it sounds like a subdued version of the noisy 106 chorus, if that makes sense. Yes, uh, you, you can't put it on, um, what is it, mode one and two at the same time. So that's something to think about. Um, more important on the filter or pitch than the VCA. Yeah, it's, uh, it's important, but maybe not that important. Let's go over to the JD-800. This is the most expensive synth in a room. Cheapest one I could find in good condition is $1,800 right now. From Music Sound Tokyo, who I have to give a big shout outs to because I just bought my Roland SH-2 from them and it came in sparkling condition, amazing and beautifully packaged, just a pleasure to buy from. So this synthesizer is without a doubt one of the most gorgeous, glorious synths out there. I'm going ahead and just trying to find uh, one of the patches I really like and see if we can find something. Um, worth doing a checkout on where is my boy Iceman? i want to find that real quick um we have so many cool patches in here but it's probably i think the one that makes me go wow the most so let's see i gotta be close to it come on baby there it is Good old Iceman. So if you haven't heard of JD-800 before, this is the moment to check it out for sure.
right so the sound of this synthesizer is amazing there's a reason people covet these before we get even talking about the synth itself i just want to say the range on this synth is going to get a five for me because this synth does stuff that no other synthesizer in the room does i don't think it's going to be a surprise to anybody that it's going to be hard for me to part with this synthesizer here's another really important sound the wailing guitar sound that was used by the prodigy to do voodoo people i'm not going to play that patch if you're interested it's in the the link is in the description to all of my videos i did a whole deep review on this synth but <laughs> Just one of the most cool patches ever made. Um, the JD800 came out in 1991 and is something of, a, of a, a weird kind of cult classic legendary synth because it's giant. It's the heaviest or it's the second heaviest, but definitely the biggest synth in the room here. You can see it's giant and um, just a basically it took the D50 and fixed a lot of the issues that they had with it. So the D50 had a slow response time uh, for some players because it was using older chips. With this, they had a chip just for the keyboard and a chip just for the sound engine and a chip just for the effects, so on and so forth. And so it's what Eric Person called discrete chip design that after this synth, they went to just putting everything on a chip, right? But this has separate chips for everything, so the response time is lightning fast, like on an analog synth. And it's a really, really cool thing. Let's see here what everybody's saying. It really is massive concourse. Um, it is incredibly sick. Um, let's see. Voltage issues from Japan. So let me show you guys something real quick here. I think I have one that I can show on stream. I'm going to show it definitely next week, but let's grab this real quick. Wasn't planning on doing this, but it's important. Uh, so you can get one of these voltage um, converters here, step-down transformers. I get these off of Amazon for 30 bucks. They're great. They are uh, wonderful, and you can just use them, plug them into the wall, and then plug your Japanese voltage into this. So my Alpha Juno is from Japan, and the uh, Roland SH2 is a Japanese voltage synth, and there's no problems with it. I've been meaning to do a video talking about using them because I think a lot of people are afraid to buy Japanese synths because they don't want to accidentally screw anything up, you know? Um, but for me, it is a great way because a lot of times you can get vintage synths from Japan cheaper than you can get them over here in America. Just an incredible thing. Here's another one, the Crystal Rhodes, probably the greatest electric piano sound of all time, or aside from a real Rhodes. Just really, really, really gorgeous. I'm seeing a lot of keeps keeps in there uh which is probably the case unless you're gonna sell it to me well i plan on selling some of these since so uh for sure what year this is from 1991 that's part of the reason it is something of a 
rare bird a um what's the phrase i'm looking for there a phrase for a um oh it's right on the tip of my tongue basically a rare sort of underrated synth it, it's arguable if you want to say these are underrated or not now the reason i said 1800 by the way for these is these are plagued with a serious issue called the red glue problem which destroys the key beds of these synthesizers so do not buy one of these unless you know that the red glue problem has been handled and that's what's interesting about trying to score reliability on this synth this thing is built like a fucking tank but they didn't anticipate that the glue that they used to hold the key bed together would melt and destroy the key bed so please 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 if you're watching this video do not buy one of these unless you are confident that you're not going to have that problem that the uh key bed has been completely rebuilt like this one once it's been rebuilt though it's as good as it could possibly get so the reliability for this particular uh jd800 is a five for me the interface also a five from me because it is as many faders and knobs as you could possibly want it is deep the one thing i wish is that there was a way to simplify the synth down a little bit more like the jp8000 but i think it is a really good value um even though it is expensive it's the most expensive here synth here um if you co-sign that step-down converter, I think it's time to start looking at a lot of Japanese shops online. Absolutely. For 30 bucks, you know, you can like, say you can save $200 on a synthesizer by buying it from Japan. $30 is a totally valid way to save a lot of money. Um, and I know I've done that like with my Juno too. I got one for very, very cheap. Because a lot of these older Roland synths they have a shitload of them in Japan, and they are not really as valuable, and people are afraid of the um, the voltage converting. And I'm here to tell you, do not worry about that. It is cool. Yeah. You can switch any of the four layers off when playing, too. Correct. Uh, looks awesome, but sell, sell, sell. Not enough character. So I will say this. Um, the... There is a certain thing to this synth that when, for me, compared to... Compared to the D50, it doesn't have as much character, and for some people, it might actually border into that, that territory of, like, the Korg M1 or other workstation synths to come that really were bland and boring because they just kind of have that, like, could-be-anything sound. I don't know. For me, it's hard to argue with that. I get nostalgia for that type of sound, that incredible sort of romplery, early 90s wave station-y type sounds. The easiest way to describe the sound of this synth is it is a wave station you can edit. <laughs> I love the Korg wave station, which came out the year before 1990, and it is a better value synth if you just want to use the presets, and the presets are incredible because they had a team led by uh, Dave Smith of Sequential Circuits fame, as well as John Skippy Lemkul, plugin guru here on YouTube, who's probably the most prolific designer sound designer here on youtube and um it's just you can't argue with it but the jd800 you can actually make usable sounds with it whereas the the wave stations totally like just use the sounds they programmed because it would get a negative 10 on the interface <laughs> on the interface score um uh, can you use a controller keyboard via MIDI for the JD-800? Yes, you can, and that is a very fair way to use it, if you don't mind. If you just want the sounds, but you don't want to um, 
deal you can get these for about a thousand dollars broken which is still really fucking expensive because roland has released the jd 08 um uh boutique scent sorry about that my brain's geriatric piece of shit brain um jd8 jd08 for 400 dollars right now or so it's been a while since i've checked the price everything's been going up in price but um hey by the way scum cheers out to all you guys who've been hanging out this long in the stream love you guys very much and then maybe even better way to get some of the sounds of this synthesizer would be to actually just use the roll in cloud so i believe my friend aquatic borealis has a roll in cloud subscription Could definitely be a thing. Welcome back, Ryan and Nikki. How's it going? I love a good one shot. Um, let's see. Can we convince you to put Inderbergs in your mailbox so we can kidnap them so I can be functional tomorrow? Yes, you can. <laughs> one of my other faves, Wave Station EX. Have that one. And um, by the way, guys, I actually asked one of the people who was here, and I'm sorry I'm blanking on your name, whoever you are, I appreciate you, who actually bought a Roland JD-08 after the JD-800 stream. And he said he didn't mind that the faders didn't go that far. So the faders on these are not even that big, but of course the JD-08 is a very, very small synth. But he said it wasn't a problem. So that's a valid way to get those JD-800 sounds for a lot cheaper than buying a busted JD-800 and using a MIDI controller with it. Let's see, let's see. Um, yes, the OX, uh, the JX-08, boutique also really cool um i love the jd800 um so let's see where did i put that pencil here's the pencil so we're gonna go ahead and put a four for the sound and the only reason i'm docking it is because it is not my favorite sound in the room because the d50 exists so the thing about the d fucking 50 is that it is hard to compare with some of the sounds that are in it, like this one. So if you have not heard a Roland D50 before, this synthesizer, which came out three years before the JD800, this boy right here is an incredible synthesizer. There is a major problem with this synth, in my opinion, which is that it does not come with the, like the JD800, with a programmer. The programmers for these, because they are vintage, usually run for about $700 at least. Detronics, I believe, makes a programmer for it. I have yet to purchase it. It is a incredible, incredible synthesizer, uh, and for me is the most nostalgic synth in the room, even though it is not analog. It is the most glorious sounding synth in my opinion, and that is why it is getting a five in the sound category. So, reliability. This synth has some issues. These membrane switches here, I don't know if you guys can see me uh, on the stream here because of the layout, but these switches love to fucking die, but you can clean them. For that reason, on the uh, reliability, I'm gonna give it a four real quick. 
Um, because it's built like a fucking metal tank, but the switches tend to go. And I wanted you guys to know that. And I do have to sometimes like finger fuck the shit out of these <laughs> membrane switches to get them to work, but it does work. One of the things I demonstrated on the intro is that there is aftertouch. And so if we move over into some of the aftertouch stuff, if I can find some here, maybe this one. Come on, baby. Let's see, where was it? Pressure me strings. You can hear that the aftertouch does work on the synth, which is pretty incredible. It's a little stiff. It's a little stiff fur than my newly rebuilt Alpha Juno. But the really cool thing about this synthesizer is its price. It's the second cheapest keyboard in the room. I saw one on Reverb today in great condition for $625. That is a very cool thing. Um, and so for me, uh, $625 for this incredible piece of gear is more than worth it. Let's see here. Let's move. And you can hear, of course, the famous digital native dance sound. It just feels like a quality piece of hardware. It's one of my favorite pieces. Um, but the range is not so great. I'm going to give it a three. And the thing is, the interface, I'm giving a, a classic one, which is the score I'm reserving for since that I'm not even going to attempt to try programming without uh, having a programmer for it. Let's see here. Let's see, I know it's not a D50, but I got a D20 last week for $80. It could suffi suffice me at the moment until I feel the need to land a bargain D50, yeah. Sell the JD800 and get a D50 programmer. You know, I will say this, Dubstation, you bring up a good point, which is I kind of like the sound of the D50 a little bit more. I don't exactly know why. It's a little warmer, surprisingly. It's really uh, something else that it's just got a unique character, even though, you know, under the hood, it's a digital synth. So you'd think it would be, um, you know, reproducible. There's nothing in the world that sounds like this. Something about the way those, uh, like, the pulse width modulation on patches like this sound that it's just... So see, here's a good example. I have to really push in to get these sounds to happen. Um, so there could be something to be said for you could get a D50 and a uh, and a programmer for it for let's say fourteen hundred dollars right? Which would be $400 cheaper than buying a JD800. Lost the microphone. It's going back on the face. So yeah, JD800, $1,800. Now there's some advantages to this. There's some things in this synth that you don't have there, right? Um, you have some cool things. Let's see. Right, there's some stuff that you can do with this synth that's beyond the capacity of the D50, but there is something about the sound of this synth. So why don't we go back and pull up the Crystal Roads patch over here. 
So that's the Rhodes sound over here. Here it is over on the D50. Very similar, but warmer. Uh, less movement, too. Let's go ahead and try that same chord over here. You can hear that there is an incredible amount of high end on this synthesizer because this is at 16 bit samples as opposed to 8 bit samples. So. really get the brightness of this synthesizer. All right, so looking at the D50, I've got five, one, so six, nine, and 13. I have to count like an idiot live on stream because the Imperial Stout is working. Mm. Let me go ahead and have a little bit more intoxication. And guys, I've got good news for everybody who's been hanging out to, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's do this again. For everybody who's been hanging that out. Is one seriously yo, 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 yo. What was that? <laughs> Anonymous, thank you for the $6.66 donation. I appreciate that very much. Whoever you are out there, you are amazing. Can't decide. This choice is going to be tough. That is one seriously perverted bitch. All right, cool people. So I just dropped uh, 10 gift subs into the chat or gift memberships, I should say. So if you've been hanging out this whole time, we uh, have uh, reached a really cool point, which is now YouTube is going to pick people who are not subscribed yet to get subscribed or are not subscribe memberships, whatever they call that shit. So we've covered three of the six cents and we are looking at scores of 13 for the D50, the interface being the big thing that is docking it and the range because although it is got a, the sounds it does are amazing. It is not uh, as versatile as say the U20 for instance. Hey, hey, Barb, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. So hopefully YouTube will start dishing out these memberships for you guys. I wanted to hook some people up. Um, I don't have any choice over it, by the way. So whatever goes out, I'm sorry if you don't get a membership. I have no control over that. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, let's talk about... So the D50 with a score of 13. There we go. Max P just became a sponsor. <laughs> Welcome to the Vulture Culture, Max. Uh, the JX3P with a that score of 15, and the JD800 with a score of 19. Wow, there's some shit going on now. It's coming out. Let's see. Who is that? Who just got one? Um, I will take that JD800 off your hands over my cold, dead body, space, <laughs> space man. All right, so why don't we go over to the controversial one over here, the JP8000. So this synthesizer has issues. Thank you. 
big Zelda vibes. I agree. Super saw some other nice, but issues you have seen and the screen. Yeah. So my screen is already bojangled from last week's stream, which is very frustrating because I've had this replaced by a great synth tech. And so one thing I have to say about that is if you want to see, it should be the first video in the link in the description. It says, watch all synth videos, but you can watch me make some sounds with the synthesizer. And for one thing, I want to give it a great score for the interface because the thing about the interface is you've got all of the knobs here, just like on the JD-800. But what's even better than the JD-800 is it's a simpler synth. There's more, it's more of a traditional synth in the sense that it's less of a PCM sample type based thing. Um, and it kind of goes back to the roots of synthesis a little bit more than the JD-800 does. But the problem with this synthesizer, as far as I'm concerned, is, so let's see, if I go to shift in it right, will that do it? No, 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 I wanted to have that control. There we go. So we can, we can make cool sounds, like, so for instance, if we want to create a super saw sound, we just select super saw, increase the mix, Increase the detune. Blend in a little bit of oscillator two, which we could bring up an octave. Turn that over to a sawtooth. We could add some filter cutoff here. Add chorus and effects, right? It's pretty easy. Right, very, very cool. Turn the feedback down a little bit, bring the sustain down. And if we wanted, we could bring the cutoff up as we're playing, so. And we can even use these gray tone controls here to add some low end, so it sounds more like a D50. And even some high end. And if we set it to a seventh here, the second oscillator, and apply some attack to both the amp and the filter, we can get a sort of uh, a soundtracky type sound. just really gorgeous right out of the gate it, it it really does sound good the problem with this synth for me is that as soon as you leave this sort of super saw territory um you know what's also cool is the feedback oscillator so let's move over there real quick and really can create some beautiful sort of, uh, if I turn this off. Oh, it's interesting. It's sort of like put me into legato mono mode over here. Can I turn that off with the foot? Maybe not with the feedback oscillator. Let's go ahead and put it back to super saw and see. Yeah, turn that off. That's interesting. I didn't realize that. We could also do triangle. Is 
I'm seriously perverted. Bitch. Yo, 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 yo. Anonymous, thank you for the $6.66 donation. I really appreciate that. Uh, that's awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We can go over to noise. And actually play the noise filter. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with this synth, actually. And it's very quick and easy. I'd say, as far as the interface goes, I want to give it a that five. Yo, yo, yo. Bitch. I appreciate that. Member, Tiberian Fiend, welcome. I appreciate that very much. Uh, I see you're a gifted welcome to the vulture culture. That is one seriously perverted bitch. Yes, yes, yes. Very, very cool. Um... So, if I miss anybody's comments or stream or uh, stuff, just uh, I apologize. Hey, Z Vision, welcome to the stream. They really, really are. Um, Aquatic says he's not fond of the JP8000, and I have to agree that it is not my favorite in terms of sound, and that is why I'm going to give it a two in terms of sound. Uh, I'll give it a three. Let's cross that out and put a three in. It, to be fair, it can sound really good, but there's something about it that always sounds less than the uh, beautiful JD-800. Let's see here if I move this back over to, say, square. And then we go over and play something similar over here. I don't know. It sounded pretty damn good right now. <laughs> but that's because it has the advantage of being programmed by Vulture Culture, <laughs> which is something that no other synth necessarily has built into it. Um, so, Tiberian Fiend, welcome to the Vulture Culture. Uh, it does have the Super Saw, and that is powerful. That is the first synth to have a quote-unquote Super Saw, arguably, or at least to call it that, which is a big deal. And... Um, the interface is great. The reason I am not giving this interface the highest rating, I'm going to give it a three again, which is horrible. But if you go back and watch that stream, you will see, I probably can show off real quick, actually. I want you to listen to how this filter responds as I move this to K knob. So all the way down, really useless parameter value there, but not so different than the JX3P, if we're being honest. Then... That's a very good way you can hear the difference here. So what I'm trying to highlight is that the parameter resolution is very strange where you'll get these big jumps. between usable values and then suddenly you're way too tight or you're way too long. And the stream that we did with the JP8000 last week was plagued with this where I was like trying to program something and other ones with envelope depth. So check this out. Useless, 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 useless. I'm over 50% here and we're just starting to be able to hear envelope depth. I am within... If this was divided into 10, I am past the eighth mark. So I'm at like 85% is the first usable value. Then... And it feels like there's only three usable values up there, which is all within like 85, 95, and 100%. It's a very frustrating thing with this synth. And I could be totally... It could be this synthesizer too, by the way, but I've only got the one to check out. So unfortunately, that's part of the deal. 
Swedish Mind Freak. Welcome to the stream. Hey, I watched your video about the JP8000. I have to say, I don't have the issues, problems you have with the display and the filter. Um, yeah, it could be this. I might need to install a new operating system. It was factory reset recently, though. Um, it changes the settings by itself in the first 10 minutes before the unit is warm. Sorry for your English. Your English is great. Nothing to apologize for. Um, I would not be surprised if this synth has unique problems, just like all vintage synthesizers can get a little wonky. My Poly 6 was really wonky for a long time. Um, but I do think it's worth... Let me say it this way. This has a few issues. And they're... Uh, issues that have been reported by a lot of people. So they're not as like tragic and as uh, synthesizer ending as say the red glue problem on a JD-800. That's a heartbreak. That's a tragedy if you've spent your money on an incredible synth like this and you get it home and it is fucked because of the red glue. But the problems with this one, which seem to be, uh, for instance, I can't use this with Omnisphere because it's too jittery. All of the knobs are too jittery and it fucks it up. There's a bunch of ways in which the synth is frustrating me, this one in particular, and it sounds like a lot of these G JP 8000s have this problem. So I want to be honest with people who are watching this video, like, hey, buyer beware. Buy one of these. You might get an amazing one. This is true about all vintage synths, by the way. I'm not trying to be harsh on this one, but th my experience with this synth has been very much a kind of mixed bag of like, wow, it's really great. The sound is not my favorite, but it is good. It can make some cool sounds, and you can get to them very quickly. But, yeah, it's just an interesting sort of a thing. There's a guy who does a JP8080 software version, but it runs in Reactor. Um, yeah, it would be easier to stick to it in the DAW. I might need to do the firmware. Let's see what else is going. Cho8080 is what it's called. Yes. Uh, I'm glad you beat that, Mighty Pinto. Uh, Aquatic Borealis is dropping the cells in the chat, and I, I think he might be right. But it does sound good. My question with this synth has always been, why is it that that sounds like that, and yet this synth can sound like this. Why is it that the JP8000 seems to struggle to sound as good? You can watch in my stream from last week that I did a comparison of the soundtrack preset in the D50 and the JP8000, my recreation of it. Now, it could just be that I didn't do a great job. I am no Eric Persing, that is for sure. But I couldn't get it close. Like, I could get it close, but I couldn't get it to sound as good, which is frustrating in a synth that's 10 years older than the D50. There's sort of this dark era, dark age for Roland, somewhere in the 90s and 2000s where the synths just don't have the magic for whatever reason. Um, yeah, the JP880 has distortion and more effects. Um, yeah, it seems so. Uh, welcome to the stream, Matt. So, anyways, going over to the JP8000, I'm going to put the range actually pretty low here. Uh, what's the JP, JX3P has a range of one? I'm going to put this at a range of two. I'm going to put this at a range of two. Because comparing it with even the D50 and the JD800, you have PCM stuff in these guys that is not present in the 8000. Uh, you really are kind of stuck in a certain sound with the 8000, which is for better or worse. And the reliability is getting a one from me because it is not reliable, which is frustrating. Also, you know, when you just touch the D50, it's like a solid metal beast. I mentioned this on that stream. This entire synth feels cheap and plasticky compared to basically everything else in the room. It's the first synth that doesn't have that, like, premium feeling to it, uh, which is also another thing I have to dock it for. So let's move on over to a really special synthesizer over here, the 
Roland Alpha Juno. So this synthesizer is actually a really incredible synth. I'm going to just tell you right now, the sound for me is a five. People will bitch about this synthesizer because the filter does not go fully self-resonant the way that any uh, Juno 106 will. But let me just show you how far you can push the resonance. So this is easy to do with this MPG-50 from Retroactive up here. I'm going to just crank it all the way up. So watch your ears. But here we go. So, is that fully self-resonant? Of course not. Do you actually make sounds that need more resonance than that? I mean, in the chat, tell me if I'm wrong here. Like, if I'm missing something, please let me know. But for me... That is beautiful, and the sing-songy harmonics are crazy from this synth. And I'm surprised that this synth isn't more legendary. I think the number one reason is it just doesn't have the knobs and faders that the 106 does. Matt says, I'm brand new to synths. I'm an opera singer, classical pianist. Well, I'm sorry you have to watch my terrible playing, Matt, but here we go. Um, completely lost here. Well... Here's the thing, I do my best on this channel to try to bridge the gap between people who are new and people who have been in the game for a long time. So um, you're always welcome to ask questions. That's the beautiful thing about doing these videos live is that you can actually say, hey, can you explain this to me? I hope it's not too much of a bother. It's never a bother. I love explaining things. If you can't tell, I love the sound of my own voice. And um, I would be happy to explain anything, Matt. And also, if you watch enough of these videos, you will quickly understand synthesizers. I don't explain them all, every video, every time. But over the, you know, if you show up to every scum night or as many as you can over the months, you will very quickly understand synths, I guarantee you. I sold my JU06A to get my Alpha Juno and no regrets. So happy for it. Yes, I think this is the one of the most underrated synths out there. So comparing the price here, the... Uh, Alpha Juno, I found one that was in good condition for $780, which is actually a lot. They've gone up in price. But that's still, what is that? Um, that's about $150 cheaper than a JX3P. So for me, to be honest with you guys, as much as I love the JX3P, I'm going to go ahead and uh, mess with this envelope a bit. And let's bring the stain up. That way we have and bring that down. So I'm bringing the sustain of the filter and amplifier up and bringing the resonance down, cut off all the way up. So we can basically hear the oscillators. That was loud. Sorry about that, guys. I apologize. Um, so let's go ahead and check out a couple of things real quick here. So we have a sub and a DCO, so a digitally controlled oscillator. I'm going to turn the sub all the way off real quick and see if that changes anything. So we're listening to a sawtooth wave, right? Shouldn't surprise anybody. Um, but we actually have a bunch of different waves. So here's a sawtooth. I'm sorry, that's a square wave. All right, so here's your sawtooth wave. Mm -hmm. 
Then we have these interesting waves where they add extra harmonics in. So here's the, I'm gonna move it from Sawtooth to the other waves here. So some of these are really interesting. hear that you can pwm the sawtooth which is something you can't do i believe in any other analog synth which is this famous sound you might know <laughs> good old roland uh alpha juno hoover sound As far as I'm aware, it's the only analog synth that can do this. And of course, we could bring the sustain down here and add some attack and get more of a... Really amazing types of sounds that you can do with this. Uh, but let's go ahead and bring this up and... Uh, and check out some of these other... So these sounds are better for creating sort of bell type tones and stuff like that. So on their own, they don't sound that good. But if I bring the cutoff down and uh, let's see, we got to fucking figure out some shit here. Uh, let's bring the sustain down and the volume down faster. Yeah, there we go. So we can make these sorts of... really unique, totally different type sounds. And that's all done. We haven't even turned the sub on. We can get crazy big bass sounds with this. Go ahead and try to do that with your Juno 106. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Let's see, okay. Um, <laughs> I've missed some stuff in the chat, so let's cover this over here. Um, Matt, any question you ask is more than fine. For the sound, hey, Dale, welcome to the stream. I'm liking the D50, JX3P, Alpha Juno, and JD800 in that order. I think the JP8000 is closest to sell, at least to my ears. The resonance was beautiful. Yes, that's what I think is gorgeous about the synth. You will hear people say that there is stepping in the resonance. So let's go ahead and just kind of bring back. Uh, let's see here. You can get, add both sawtooth and square waves, just like on a Juno. But I'm going to leave the square wave off here. Kind of a little bit of um, zombie nation type sound. So as you, when people talk about the resonance being a problem, what they're actually talking about here is, listen to this, you'll hear stepping, but that's because of the MIDI values from the programmer. That's no resonance. Let's try it with a shitload of resonance. So watch your ears. But it, it actually compensates for volume pretty well. So that's happening, right? I can't deny that. But what people aren't taking into consideration is that that's actually um, not 
a problem that the synthesizer does compensate for that and smooths it out when you play. So let's see how this sounds. That's some release here. Bring the resonance down a bit. To me, that is a incredibly gorgeous. It's probably the, honestly, it's my favorite sound. I prefer the sound of the Alpha Juno over the JX3P, even though it is less expensive. I just think this synth sounds incredible, incredible, incredible. Um, so, yes. I understand to 100% if you want to remove the JP-8000. It's not fun in the long run to play with something with so many problems. Don't sell your D50. It sounds amazing. Um, let's see, let's see. I saw an Alpha Juno for 270. Oh my god, dude. I wish I was you. It's a very thick saw. Right now, all I have is software synths and a Roland keyboard plus Ableton. Will that be enough or will I have to buy an actual synth to do this stuff? Matt, you do not need any of this shit, right? If you've got Ableton, uh, Ableton, uh, Ableton has some built in synthesizers that are really, really cool. Um, software synths are great. I love Omnisphere, it's my favorite synth of all time. You do not need all of this vintage gear. It's a lot of fun to listen to. There's some cool stuff to it, but never, never, never feel like you need this stuff to be able to make cool music. I like talking that about it. I was also a professional DJ for 10 years. Anonymous, happy birthday, scum. Thank you very much, whoever you are out there, Anonymous. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, please never feel that way. The seven stage envelopes threw me off, but it's pretty fun once you get the hang of it. Yeah, so what you can do with the envelopes is if I move over here to, what is it? How do I find it? Preset, uh, synth brass swell. So this is a good example. Uh, instead of just ADSRs, we actually have additional stages so you can get more than just up and down motion you can get like this you can hear how that actually slowly opens up over time that's a really cool thing let's see what else is here in the chat wait question do you have any stepping issues with the filter sweeping with that controller notice the issue with the pg300 yes i do concourse but it is the it's just it's it is what it is you had 127 values with controllers or with synths from the 80s right so when you use an envelope or an lfo you get that smooth action that you're looking for but when you're trying to control it like you you wouldn't want to do it's not going to sound that great unfortunately it's just that um, let's see what else was in here. The retroactive MPG filter control for the Alpha Juno is very smooth. I think it uses NRPN. Yeah, it's pretty damn good. Is stepping the pause. Um, so the way I would describe it as stepping is... I don't know, what synth in this room steps the worst? This synth definitely does. I don't want to fuck with it, though. Um, what stepping is, is that, uh, when you move a filter, Nikki, let's go ahead and, uh, open the filter up here and we're going to increase the resonance, increase a little bit of volume here so you can hear it. As I move this, you will hear it sort of, uh, walk through certain notes. Yeah, you can hear it kind of chirpy right around there. It sounds pretty smooth up here. But then right around in this mid-range, you can hear it. Sort of like... Brrr, instead of just... Wow. <laughs> Sorry, does that make any fucking sense, Nikki? <laughs> uh, something like that. Okay. Woof. 
I have Mass Effect and FM8, two perfectly great synths, Matt. Do not feel that you need any analog gear, in my opinion. You can map the filter aftertouch. There's a few different things. Uh, the aftertouch on these are great. Um, so, Alpha Juno, interface with the PG50, I'm giving that a five. Range, hmm, hmm. I have to say it's better than the JX3P, but I'm going to give it a little less range than the D50 just because the D50 and JD800 have more, so I'm going to give it a two. Reliability, this thing is built like a tank. I, I absolutely love this thing. This thing is metal and tough and rugged. I feel like it is built to last. It is maybe, you know, same thing with the D50. It just has this premium feeling. Uh, so let's go ahead and tally up the Juno comes out at 17 points, which is pretty good, better than the JX3P. JP8000 coming out at nine points, putting it the lowest on the list so far. So we're almost there, guys. Um, we are moving on to the last keyboard. This one's a little hidden. I don't know if you guys can see it that well on stream. Yeah, it's there. This is the U20. The U20 basically uses the technology that Roland created for the D50 over here. Um, but instead of having a real synth engine built into it, it basically just has uh, samples. It is a rompler. And what a rompler is, is playing back samples. So there isn't anything uh, synthesy going on in here. Now, technically, I think it says um, RSPCM for resynthesized. And so there's some basic stuff in here. I think there's something vibrato and maybe you can do a little uh, envelope on the amplitude of the sample, but comparing it with any of the other romplers or samplers in the room, no, it is not a synth in any sort of way. So let's check out some stuff here. Uh, it's been a while and uh, this synth is running through not only Valhalla Delay, but a little Tal Chorus just to make it stereo. So you can get these pretty, like the range on this is pretty impressive. But a problem is a lot of these sounds are not that amazing. All right, so we got a vibraphone preset here. Let's go ahead and compare this with the vibraphone from the JX3P. I'm just curious real quick. We'll just do that real quick as a comparison. Maybe it would be better to play it an octave down. Yeah, I think so. Let me, I can control that here. Sorry for the microphone noises. So it's interesting. We've got two vibraphone sounds. It's, uh, okay, so real quick, which of the two sounds is better? I want to hear, I want to see some scum fires in the chat for whichever you prefer. It's interesting because they both have advantages and disadvantages. I mean, this one is like kind of warm and magical. on its own sounds really good, but because you have that sampled attack, there's something more convincing about the vibraphone here. It's a very good sounding sample. 3P all day, scum keep. Aquatic likes the U20. I like the quantity of keys. Is that 88? There is no 88 in the room. Everything is 61, except for the JP8000, I think, and um, the MS2000B. So those are 49ers. 
Matt, I recommend uh, taking your time on spending your money. Be be cautious because it's a it's a it's a trap. Can I get some bear traps in the chat? Oh, I don't have any. Fuck. Sorry, Anna. I know you're watching. Uh, the U20 vibraphone is better to me. MIDI layer them all. Hey, Tom. Welcome him back. Um, U20 sounds more like what I expected to hear. I agree. I mean, it is good for certain types of sounds because it does have those real samples. One of the biggest problems for me with this synth or keyboard, I should say, is... is a little bit of what um, Dubstation was saying, which is, I don't necessarily, I think it was Dubstation who was saying, I don't necessarily like um, things that are good, um, you know, at one thing, or like, I prefer to have a keyboard that does one thing really well. The problem with the U20 is it tries to do a lot of things and it doesn't nail any of them. So that's the sound of that. Let's compare that to the Stratomaster patch in the JD-800. So you can hear how, you know, it's the same type of thing, like... Velocity controlled sort of, you know... But man, does that have some ass on it. Yeah. Ah. Oh. This is sad about the bear trap. Yeah, we have to pick and choose the emojis until there's more subscribers. Uh, more members, yes. We have only, I think, eight slots. Once we get over a certain size, we will be going there. All right. Uh, let's check some more sounds out real quick. Just so I can give you guys. So here's some strings. Right, uh, so that's a thing. Let's compare that with uh, strings one and two. I don't know, what do you guys think? <laughs> what is the secret here? Let's find a better killer pad it's hard to argue with the jd800 isn't it like that just sounds so fucking big <laughs> we've really messed with this patch not a fair comparison really um I loved watching you create a brass sound. Would you be able to go about creating string sounds or would you need wavetables for that? You never need wavetables. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. So I could show you how to do that real quick. Uh, over here on the JP8000, uh, the basic string sound, I'm going to initialize it over here. So sawtooth amplifier up. We're going to just take, uh, w this has a bunch of cool shit in it, but we're going to just start with two sawtooths and blend them and detune them. So this is your basis of a saw, t of a um, string sound is some sawtooths. To the amplifier, we'll just add some attack. You'll notice it's cutting off as I move my fingers off the keypad, so we're gonna just add some release. That's not a bad saw sound, or a string sound, I keep saying saw sound. We could add some envelope depth to this and bring the cutoff down, so let's see what we get. That's very not good. We need a lot of decay. We need a lot. See, the knobs on this are frustrating, so. Uh, 
I would say the difference between sort of a string sound versus a brass sound is whether the uh, sustain on the filter stays up. So if the sustain goes all the way up, that's usually more of a string sound, even if the envelope depth isn't that high. So if I bring it down a bit, God, it's frustrating. There, let's try this. like a really warm type of sound. And again, you've got that thing with the JP8000, how there's a lot of resonance. So if we go over here and I go to, uh, what is it? Shift LFO one on the, we have a um, initialized JX3P. And so we're gonna do the same thing. So right now the oscillator mix should be about the same. Two sawtooths, let's detune one of them. And then the same idea, right? It's not actually so different. We're gonna just uh, see what happens if I bring this down. I think I need to apply that to the VCA. There we go. So we're gonna bring the sustain. The decay is the big thing, a little bit of attack. Lots of release. Sounds really good, and we could do the same thing with the cutoff over here. Where is my baby? Oh, I need to apply some envelope to that. Now, with this analog synth, we actually have to bring the cutoff a bit up. Increase the attack a bit, it's too, too stabby. Add a little resonance to make it beautiful. Something like that, uh, Matt. That's how you could do it, both with an analog synth from 1983. And basically, this setup is any VST should be about like this. So that's how you would do it. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. It's not super complicated. The G800 and JP are both worth so much you could sell them and turn them into something really cool and close to the epic vintage analog level. Big reason I would sell them both. Yeah, I agree. The JP8000, I neglected to say, is actually the third most expensive synth in the room right now for 880. These things are going for a lot nowadays. So that would be a good reason to sell that. So let's finish off on the U20. The sound for me is not as bad as it's the worst sound in the room it's it's worse than the jp8000 the interface is a one but the thing about romplers are i feel like i don't like docking them for having bad interfaces because it's kind of fun to just have a bunch of uh sound so i'm going to give this a two the range is actually pretty good i would say it's about on par with the d50 or maybe technically a little more but i'm going to give it Technically, it should be more than the D50, right? Because you can do things like pianos. It's a little bit more reliability. I had some issues with the volume knobs. So that's the only reason I'll give it a four. So that's going to give us a total of 12 points for the U20. Um, so yes, yes, yes. Um, yes, Bar Baringo's Selena clone is coming out soon. That's their recreation of the Arp Selena. Very famous sound uh, for sure. It is a stock JX3P Dale, just so you know. Okay, so in order of points, if we were to just go off of the points, now I want to re-emphasize here. So like Dubstation made a good point. Range doesn't matter to everybody, right? Um, the range of a synth is maybe a drawback for some people, right? If there's a synth that, uh, you know, is a bit to whatever what have you uh, maybe you don't want it to be that way so you want a synth that's really good at what it does the alpha juno is really good at what it does the d50 is really good at what it does um the other synths wander further right so something to consider so the jp8000 the sound is not my favorite with a score of three of five 
The interface would be a five of five, but mine has issues with the range of things. You saw me just doing that with the envelope depth here. Basically useless here. The whole range is in those last two little dots. Really frustrating, so I gave it a three. The range is limited. It is not as limited as the JX3P, but only by a little bit. And the reliability is bad. It is the least reliable synth in the room for a total of nine points. Nine points for a synthesizer that costs about $900 is a not great point to price ratio as far as value for you guys. It's a very good thing to sell. So, <laughs> real quick, guys, what do you think about the JP8000? Should I sell the JP? What does everybody think here? Just moving the oscillator to a fifth up so we can get more soundtrack y. I see some cells in the chat. Sell it. Yeah, sell it. We got a lot of cells, so that's definitely a thing. All right, moving along to the synth with the next worth score. That would be, but get an 8080 if you see a deal. Keep the JX3P and the JD800. Yes, County Fair. Hey, welcome to the stream, by the way. Um, keep the three oldest and sell the rest. <laughs> um, so moving on to the U20. So this would be the cheapest keyboard in the room, the cheapest one I saw of these on Reverb today. It's only today. These synths prices are very volatile. was for $440. And... Profit VS sounding there. This synth, or I should say keyboard, suffers from a couple of reasons why it might be time to go. As far as value, I think it's amazing. It's really great value because it sounds really cool, really unique and it's the cheapest of the keyboards in the room. So I have to say, if you're a producer, okay, I'm gonna to speak to who I think this is good for. If you're a producer out there and you want the sounds of the 80s, but you are not great at synthesis, you don't wanna spend all day programming, right? You could just get a U20 and pull up, you know, a patch like Jupiter 8 strings. <laughs> and have a beautiful, very polished 80s sound. It's got this sort of gritty character to it. Uh, so for me, it is a great piece of hardware, but maybe not for me because I like synthesis and this thing uh, doesn't do samples as well as the Proteus. Uh, arguable in Sonic Mirage U20. U20's got a higher bit rate, but maybe you like the dirt. I don't know. Um, Dub says to keep the three oldest and sell the rest. You still have the same opinion as before. So the oldest would be, what would that be? The JX3P, the U20, and the Alpha Juno. Um, it does have some unique sound qualities. I'm seeing a lot of cells. Sell it. I'm not sure why you would need a Rompler keyboard with software samples these days. I agree with that. Obviously, samples sound really good nowadays. I think this would be more for, again, like a producer who maybe... Hey, can you see me? Hey. I think this might be more for a producer who's like 
into wants to get a little of that synth wave action, wants to get a little retro wave going on, you know, but doesn't want to get into actually the hassle and upkeep and programming of these vintage synthesizers and would rather just have something that gives them the sound of the 80s immediately, this might be a very good option for them. Um, just because of the issues it has, sells it. Um, I love the 1998 to 2000 trance sound. Yeah, well, that's the thing. This this synth is definitely for someone who loves that kind of early 2000s, late 90s trance sound because it is that sound. And it really does sound great for that type of thing. Can any of these replicate the sounds from the final countdown? Sure, uh, most of them can. Most of the brass patches in these guys could be pretty close to that. I don't remember the notes for final countdown, but you could do it with most of these guys for sure. All right, so guys, are we selling the U20 or are we keeping it? Please blast the chat with your opinion. <laughs> it would be good to hear that. So I'll just play a little bit more while you guys let me know if I should sell it. At the time, this must have been great to have these realistic samples. Little Jupiter 8 brass. Flute. Love a good flute sample. Absolutely into it. Let's see. Oh, Tiberian Friend says to keep it. Price to keep, space to sell. Yeah, absolutely. Moving along to the next lowest scoring synth is the D50. I love the sound of the D50 for sure. Wow, let's go find something. I mean, there's nothing that can compare to this for me. Let's move along here. And this is a good example here of why the D50 just kills it for me. And maybe one of the problems with the U20 is it sounds like a D50, but not as good. It's like comparing them back to back, the D50 is almost always going to sound. I mean, it doesn't sound bad. Can you hear those little pops that are occurring? That's from the sample loop point. <laughs> Love that, Nikki. Also, nice use of the scum fire there, Anna. Um, yes, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a couple sounds, because when they're in the studio, they could do it. But, but it's not a complicated sound. Um, Swedish Mind Freak, you should be able to make it with most synths, for sure. Hey, thanks for subscribing, Sergio. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the D50 is just hard for me to get rid of, and this sound alone... Let's go ahead and see if I can find, uh, what are some of these here? D50 voices. Try this one out. I'm 
something about the D50 that's just gorgeous. I do think some people might be right. It might be time for Daddy to invest in a PG-1000 and start making his own sounds. Um, keep such good memories. Yes, Star Trek. It's, I, I don't think I'm ever going to sell this synth. It's just too good. Okay, let's hurry it up along to the next highest point. So this one got 15 and basically just got docked for the range because of the synths in the room, the JX 3P let's go ahead and uh, course this down actually let's try coursing this up I'm going to change my mind about that Let's get it. We can do a soundtrack with this. I never even really considered that. That's really cool. And then we could pick uh, some square waves a little closer to the original. Turn the chorus on. Now we should get a little closer to that uh, soundtrack sound. Sounds really good. Increase the envelope here. I don't know. It's also a very hard synth to keep. So, uh, to keep or to sell, what do you guys think? Here, you know, I will say, this synth is worth a lot and the range is limited. I definitely feel the urge to always do these types of sounds with it because it's where it excels. It doesn't even have a mono mode. So like, for instance, if you wanted to do the type of thing, like if I was to turn the feedback oscillator on over here and put it into mono mode, or if I was to go back to the wailing guitar pad and play like that there's actually no way to do that on the jx3p which for me is a big bummer um really good what do you guys think keeping 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 what does chorus do it basically takes um duplicates of the original signal and slowly detunes them uh there's slight delays uh in the left and right channel so let's listen to this without the chorus on so here's without chorus You'll notice it's very mono when I turn chorus on. You'll hear the difference in the left and right channel if you're using something like headphones. And it is a major part of the Roland analog synth sound is the chorus. I think that's a very important part to that. Okay, I have to ask you one thing. Have you heard the Eurodance group Max? I have not. Can you make his signature sound that you hear in the songs no more and get away? Keep fire, fire, fire. Yes, I agree. I think it's it's just hard to get rid of this guy. It's just gorgeous. Uh, then, of course, we have the Alpha Juno.
also very, very beautiful. The highest score tonight, the Alpha Juno. Yes, I think the Alpha Juno is really great. And it did score 17. The only thing that scored better than that was the JD800. And that's mostly because the interface is so good and it's just so... Iconic, being able to do something that aggressive as well as be able to do something so, you know, just... I mean, <laughs> it's worth the 1800 bucks just for that one sound, right? Uh, so, I think we've kind of come to a decision, haven't we? It seems like this JP8000 and the U20 are going. I think we're going to have to call it there and say, hey, you know what? We, uh, we had a great time with all of these synths, but a couple have to go because I always want to get some cool new stuff. And um, I think those two consistently had a lot of sells from you guys. If I go back, uh, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of sells on those guys. So I think it's uh, as painful as it is to let some of these beautiful things go. I mean, I just want to emphasize here how lucky I am to be able to have the opportunity to be a daddy to this synthesizer for a temporary time because not everybody does for a lot of people a real jp8000 is like the dream and i've got so many dream synths in this room so i'm a very very lucky man you know sucked a lot of dicks to get here and you know uh this synth in particular this one the the lcd screen is really frustrating and some of the issues that some people don't have so i want to say if you um Find these types of synths. Uh, if you know more about the JP8000, let me know if there's something I can do to fix it, how hard it is to upgrade the firmware. I might try that before I sell it. Um, quick question. Is some music purposefully made to be in separate speakers, headphones, or is that just how it's made? Sorry if it's confusing. Uh, absolutely. I mean, there is abs there's totally stuff that's made to be listened to. So... Uh, for instance, if you listen to this song we're listening to right now that I did, the drums in the background, there's a difference in the left and the right headphones. Left and the right. Look at me shaking my hands. Um, <laughs> and that's cool, you know? So right here, you'll hear. That some of the stick stuff is on the right side and some drums are on the left. And that's a way to make it sound more big and epic. Because, you know, if you're watch watching listening on your phone, everything's in mono anyways. It doesn't really matter. But when you're listening in your car with headphones, it does make a huge difference. Stereo music, Nikki. Have to go. Swedish. It's very late in Sweden. Almost morning. Uh, are you going to upload this on your channel? Hell yeah, I am. In fact, as soon as the video's over, it'll be up. And it was very nice to meet you, Swedish mind freak. Kick the microphone off my head headphones again. You're the best daddy to those synths. <laughs> and it looks like the U20 over here is going to be going as well. Because although it is great, I think it's ready to meet its next daddy because it's amazing but i think someone else will enjoy it even more than i do so let's see let's see let's see um one last time i just want to say you guys are awesome thank you for making it all the way to the end of the stream we are going to be checking out the roland sh2 guys i am so let me just get this real I am so excited for this synth. You guys have no clue. It is so cool to have this dream analog synth from 1978. It will be the oldest synthesizer in the room. I have never had my fingers on a synth from the 70s before. 
Well, I guess I did have the Arp Odyssey for one day, but it was massacred. This thing sounds incredible. I can't wait for you guys to hear it. It really does have that magic to it that a lot of synths don't. Um, and it's going to be a really cool stream. It's the first time I have a mono synth as opposed to a poly synth. Poly meaning you can play multiple notes at once. So I'm kind of interested in going into that territory more uh, in the future. And so... Please, please, please check that out next week. That'll be a lot of fun for the Scum family. I think it's going to be a really cool synth to explore and uh, have fun with. And uh, in the meantime, I hope you guys have an incredible week. Can't wait to see you at 9 on Wednesday next week. Love and light, bitches. I'm out. <laughs>